Welcome to the Rideshare Guy podcast, where you will learn about the rideshare and mobility industry straight from Harry Campbell, who's got over five years experience covering the industry and has talked to thousands of drivers. There's no better place to stay up to date, entertained, and educated. So let's dive in. All right, Jay, how are you doing today? Awesome. Awesome. It's uh, Friday. And uh, yeah, it's interesting getting used to this kind of schedule. You know, uh, I used to go out and drive during the week on the weekends. And now I'm staying home. And I don't even go out. I go out <laughs> to take a walk. And then I go out and maybe get some coffee and some food. And that's yeah. it. It's like seeing human beings is like seeing a rare animal now. It's, it's a very unusual times we're living in my friend. Yeah, it is. Uh, I think one thing that I know I've found myself, it's, it's interesting. I've almost sort of just resigned, tried to resign myself to the fact that there's nothing to do or nowhere to go. And kind of, I almost feel like I've become at peace with it. Right. Because it's like, Oh, I don't need to really worry mm. about what we're going to do today. We're just going to do the same thing we do every day, chill, relax with my son, go for a walk, maybe go for a bike ride, you know, maybe order lunch or dinner, maybe make dinner. There's not a whole lot of choices that you have to make. And I think sometimes that can be a good thing. And you know me, I think most of my audience uh, knows I'm sort of an eternal optimist. So I'm always looking for the silver linings in any <laughs> situation. And so that's what, that's what I'm going with right now. Yeah, I, I've noticed I haven't been like that. I, uh, I, I'm far more resistant to this. Yeah. I, you know, my, my core value is spirit yeah. of adventure, and I do not like being told I can't get on an airplane and go to Thailand, yeah. you know? Well, uh, I will say, I think if you pull yeah. up flight radar, there are actually quite a number of flights still happening. So you could, I think, actually still fly if you want to. <laughs> there just may be... Uh... No, they, no. They're, they're, they're not letting any, any foreigners oh, into okay. Thailand right certain, now. I know certain you countries you are cannot... giving it the uh, ixnay, but uh, I'm sure there's a country out there. So if you're yeah. feeling real adventurous, you do have at least yeah. some options. I'll do that. So I guess enough about you and I, though. I do appreciate uh, the update on your life yep. and you hearing out my issues. <laughs> Likewise. So I think yes. uh, today I really wanted to bring you on because I've been thinking about this topic for a while. And obviously we've been covering on the blog and the YouTube channel and even the podcast a little about this whole coronavirus and the pandemic situation and just all the different facets of it. But I sort of wanted to, you know, not recap the whole situation with you, but kind of like start a little bit at the beginning and just walk through Uber and Lyft's response to the coronavirus and kind of how that has affected drivers and, you know, kind of take things back. So I think you're the perfect person to do it since obviously you're still driving or you were, you know, are still a driver and maybe not doing it right now, yeah. but, uh, and also kind of covering it right alongside myself from, you know, sort of a, a quasi blogging uh, YouTubers point of view. And, uh, you know, for me, it feels like, I don't know, I guess just at a high level, I feel like Uber and Lyft have done a lot of the right things just two to three weeks late in nearly every single scenario. And that's kind of my, you know, 10,000 feet view. I'm curious to know what you think at a high level, how have they done? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I remember thinking this is a really big mm -hmm. problem, you know, and in the, in the beginning it was like, well, how big is this thing going to get? And then at some point it was like, this is a really big, yeah. big deal. You know, drivers are driving around, they could get sick. And it seemed like it wasn't for another two weeks that Uber or Lyft actually even said yeah. anything about it to the drivers, you know? And um, and it seems that's consistent with, with Uber and Lyft, you know? It's, it, uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, I, it just kind of burns me that I'm a taxpayer, you're a taxpayer. And rather than Uber and Lyft, uh, helping helping out with unemployment, yeah. you know, we the taxpayers are going to be covering the, dr yeah. the drivers. Well, I think we'll definitely know? get and, into and, the unemployment side and uh, and the issues there. I yeah, mean, I'm actually yeah, pulling yeah. up. But you I, know, I, just, I wanted to pull up our YouTube channel quickly because I know you did a video pretty early on about uh, coronavirus, and I know it was kind of when you and I were still discussing things, and it was actually it looks like it was almost over a month ago. I'm going to pull up the exact date. It it was March 3rd, 2020, mm. that we actually published our first video about 
um, the coronavirus. And I don't know if you remember at the time, like, I think you, I, I, sure. I, I was surprised that that video wasn't more popular at the start. I think it only got one or 2000 views at the start, which is pretty low for us on YouTube. And I was sort of thinking to myself mm -hmm. like, oh, this, I, you know, it was almost like there was this big wave, I think a week or two before and people were scared about it, but then it seemed to die down. But then again, by mid March, mm -hmm. it like obviously really picked up steam. Is that sort of what, what you felt like now that I'm bringing up the dates? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, the, the, the whole White House response, you know, in the beginning was this isn't a big deal. And, and I think a lot of people, you know, heard that and felt like, oh, yeah. OK, maybe this isn't as big, as big a deal, you know, say what you want about Trump. But, you know, the president of the United States and all his advisors, the, you know, the, the, the word coming out was not a big deal. Fifteen cases. It's going to be down to zero. You know, we're going to we're going to. We're not China. We're going to yeah. take care of this, right? And 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 then, you know, then Trump had that one uh, news conference, and it was like, holy crap, yeah. this is serious. You know, people can't fly from Europe yeah. all of a sudden, right? And and then it seemed like days after that, it was shelter in place in yeah. California. It was like, wow. Yeah, it did know? seem. So I do think there was a, a period of time where there's a question mark about how bad this yeah. could get. And uh, once it got resolved, then then our YouTube videos really started to, to yeah, get a lot yeah, of views. Yeah, no, it's funny, right? Because this initial v video we did, I think, in, on March 3rd, it now has 6,500 views. But I know in the first week or two, it only had maybe a couple thousand views. And, you know, I think if I go and look at your last coronavirus video on YouTube, I think it's probably close closing in or a couple of the popular ones. One has 84,000 views in five days and another has, yeah. uh, you know, almost 100,000 views in a little less than a week and a half. So obviously there's been a, t you know, a big shift. And so I think that's why I wanted to bring you on and really explore, like, how did we get from yeah. there where no one cared about it or no one really thought about it to here? And also how Uber, I mean, really focus on how Uber and Lyft have, you know, sort of, you know, been there or not been there because I think the you know, I guess the initial choice that drivers had to make and even still have to make today, because there are, even though demand is way down, I mean, there's still drivers driving. I pulled up my Uber app yesterday and there was a car within three minutes. There are eight within eight cars within less than a right. mile of me here in the mid middle of Los Angeles. So obviously there are still people driving. And I think that's the, the big question that people have to make right now is from the driver's side is if it's, if, if driving is something that you, you know, have to do, I guess, basically, because I think that, you know, you and I um, would not drive during these times, but obviously there are many people and, you know, I think everyone's in a different situation. So I'm not saying people should or shouldn't. I just know my personal situation and for the drivers who are driving, I mean, it seems like, you know, they kind of want to do everything they can to protect themselves and it's only you know in the past week or two that uber is now sending out cleaning supplies and you know some form of ppe so i don't know i guess to me like right. that seems pretty late what do you think right i completely agree i mean it's a tough choice you know i mean mm -hmm. for drivers to make if, if you have to make money to you know put food on the table and uber and lyft you know has been your main yeah. thing it's tough to make the decision to uh, yeah. to drive, you know, because you, you are not only risking your own life, but since this thing can go undetected for two or three days while you can still spread the spread it, you know, you could bring it home, right? And and whoever you live with could yeah. get it and whoever you come into contact can get it. So th that was the decision I made was, was to stop. But I understand many drivers don't have that, um, that, yeah. that choice, you know, they have to, they, they have to keep driving, even though, I saw an article about some driver in San Francisco and he drove for like 10 hours and made like $80, yeah. you know? I mean, that's like a fraction of what, especially in what San you Francisco. could make. <laughs> uh, especially, yeah, right. That's a $300 day, not an, yeah. not an $80 day. Um, yeah, so it's a tough choice. And I mean, part of me thinks, should, should Uber and Lyft just stop, mm -hmm. you know, just not even allow drivers to drive? You know, especially when we're in the shelter in place, um, yeah. you know, the, the governor here has said, you know, stay yeah. at home. Well, stay what at do home. you think? Do you think that and, they and, should be, you know, Uber and Lyft should be, should stop operating right now? Yeah. I do. I do. Because, because it's obviously, how can it not help to spread the disease? You know, and, until we got this thing worked out, you're, you're putting two people together in a, in a little metal box, yeah. Right. 
And you don't know if either one of them is contagious. And then that person who's driving is going to interact with yeah. 10, 15 people in a day. You know, I mean, it, it, it's obviously a health it's a it's a health scare. And when there are other things that the drivers could do, delivering food, delivering, you know, marijuana, delivering Alcohol. groceries, yeah, there's a million things uh, delivering deliver pizzas. Right, now. right. right. Um, that would force people to, to even stay more in, in place. Um, rather than being tempted by all, just grab an Uber yeah. and you know get well, a ride. So yeah, yeah let, I, let me take the counter yeah. there because I think what I've been hearing from drivers and sort of what also makes sense is you know especially in a place like California, it's shelter in place. You know, don't leave your house unless it's for essential items or you know tasks or jobs or work or whatever it might be. So if you're someone who doesn't own a car and you had the option of you know you had to get to work or you had to go buy groceries or you had to do something, doctor's appointment, you know, essential doctor's appointment, whatever it is, I think actually you know in that case like Uber and Lyft are one of your best options. I, I, I don't know if you were on my YouTube live the other night when I asked this, I did a very informal poll, not scientific at all, but I asked a couple hundred people mm -hmm. that were watching live, you know, if they would prefer, you know, if they had to take a ride, would they take an Uber or Li an Uber and Lyft or get on a public bus? And overwhelmingly, mm. you know, most people responded Uber Lyft. And I think that that actually makes a lot of sense because even though there's 10 or 15 people that might be coming in and out of a car in a single day, and you know an uber on a public bus there's a hell of a lot more people that are going to be coming in on a single day even you know during these times where there's you know a lot less demand and you know people are touching the bars and mm -hmm. you know i guess if you think about it like i've been thinking about something lately and i kind of think uh, i think about it like the different like when you're thinking about safety right now during this pandemic, which modes are the safety, safest, which modes of transportation, like probably walking is pretty safe, but you mm -hmm. obviously have a limited range. And then from there, it's, I think things like bicycles, micro mobility, even scooters, uh, even shared scooters and shared e-bikes. I mean, it's not hard to just slap some gloves mm. on. You're not like licking the handlebars, right? <laughs> you're right. out in the open. It's just right. you. And then from there, you know, I think there's a big step up to Uber and Lyft. And on top of that, you know, public transportation. So, you know, and obviously that, you know, if you own mm -hmm. your own car, you're in a, you can kind of just drive yourself mm -hmm. around, but that's kind of how I look at it there. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. No, it's a, it's a good argument. I, th I, uh, it seems like we, we, we could really restrict the amount of Uber and Lyft use to just yeah. the essentials, you know, just to get to the grocery store, just to get food, just to get medical care. But I, I'm sure there are a lot of people using Uber and Lyft for way more than that uh, because yeah. it's available, you know, because it's available. Yeah. Um, so I think there's a middle, I think there's a middle yeah. ground. I like um, that idea. Perhaps, perhaps Uber and Lyft could, you know, just pick a few drivers and, and, and make sure they're t completely sealed off and, and, um, you know, not, not at risk. And, and all they do is handle the, yeah. the essentials, you know, taking people to a doctor and and taking people to grocery stores the things that you absolutely yeah. have to do until this until this passes because it is spreading more and more of this yeah. virus and and as we're seeing you know we may lose 100 100,000 Americans you know this yeah. round i mean so it's it's a serious yeah, serious definitely. health concern. And I guess to yeah. sort of defend Uber and Lyft for a second, since I think so far we've kind of criticized their response uh, to the coronavirus. <laughs> I mean, I will say, you know, they are now passing out, you know, PPE and cleaning supplies. And, um, you know, there is a shortage of the these items. So it's not like they can just go and buy right. this off the shelf for the drivers that are still driving and still active. And, you know, I've even seen that Uber, I don't, I don't know, I'm sure Lyft is doing it too, but, you know, Uber is doing ads now that sort of are encouraging people to stay at home which is a little strange but you know it's kind of cool it's like hey uber's telling me not to ride uber okay um or you know only for essential mm -hmm. items but um, i guess an interesting middle ground could be if they restricted it to those essential rides only and i, I do think that they're using messaging like that i guess it's just not required and anecdotally i have heard you know one right. of the silver linings right now for the drivers that are still driving is that they are taking you know nurses to hospitals or frontline workers to the grocery stores or two restaurants and so sort of keeping a lot of that supply right. chain so that's definitely been you know kind of one positive aspect of the story i think the one thing though that 
I will say is I think Uber and Lyft were very slow to react, especially on the driver side. A, a moment that stood out in time to me was when Uber told all of their mm. corporate employees in San Francisco that they needed to work from home. And at the same time, mm. you know, they have a couple million drivers out there still driving. And I just thought to myself, wow, that's like a pretty, you know, stark contrast. Mm. Uber is basically admitting like this thing is serious and dangerous, but they weren't, you know, doing shit for drivers yet. Uh, in in re- yeah, that, really. And I think that that kind of, you know, I imagine that um, if they, you know, if they owned the cars or they were more responsible for the drivers, you know, whether it was employees, drivers or whatever it was, I think they would have been a lot better prepared. So I don't really buy the argument that Uber and Lyft were taken, you know, by surprise by this. I think it just wasn't a priority. That's sort of the best way to put it I, in, my, in my mind. And is it? it and isn't that the relationship that Uber and Lyft have with, yeah. with the drivers? Yeah, I this guess it's been, not a surprise. <laughs> been, been, right. This has been the relationship. You know, we we're just sort of left to fend for ourselves, but not not completely like an independent contractor because there are certain things we right. can't do on our own. Um, yeah, if we were employees, this would be a completely different yeah. scenario. You know, we would we wouldn't be, you know. We wouldn't be worried about whether or not we're actually going to get unemployment <laughs> benefits. Let, let's face yeah. it, you and know, I, uh... every everybody who's a driver has applied, and and I haven't heard of anyone getting yeah, any benefits. I... You know, who said they worked for Uber yeah, or Lyft? We're definitely going to talk know? about unemployment. So uh, I know we're both itching to get into that because that's what a lot of uh, people have been asking questions about. the 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 only thing I want to touch on though before we get into you know some of the unemployment and I guess employment issues are sort of you know like what drivers are doing now. I mean, we talked about that first cohort of drivers, you know, if they're still driving, you know, I think that's a pretty small number. And then the ones that, you know, have either quit ride or, you know, sort of not doing ride share because, you know, I I think there's this big group of drivers, you know, especially drivers who are older, who have, you know, other are immunocompromised or have other health issues and, you know, have gotten doctor notes. So I think there's this whole group of other drivers who, you know, just don't want to do it because there's legitimate or, you know, they just don't want to do it. And it seems like a lot of those drivers Mm -hmm. are doing things like switching to delivery, Instacart, food delivery, grocery deliveries, pretty much everything there. Um, I I guess that's Mm -hmm. sort of like the main, I mean, I guess that's really the only other work opportunity there is, you know, if you're an Uber or Lyft driver, right? Is that sort of what you found or is there something I'm missing? Yeah, no, unless you can go get a job for, you know, for some company, you know, like a regular, regular job. Um, yeah, if, if you're, you're going to drive, you have to work, yeah, but you don't options. want to do Uber and Lyft. If you, if you have to, it, right. You got, you got to go deliver Food, something else. And, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I know the pizza, pizza, apparently a lot of people are eating pizza right now. <laughs> I ordered now. a pizza yeah, the John's other night. Tiring. <laughs> <laughs> Domino's though that's my uh, my fast food pizza of choice but gotcha. um, yeah, yeah and I mean I guess I will say just we can quickly touch on delivery services but I know I've been hearing from drivers that Instacart is by far the most popular right now um, I mean there's still a ton mm-hmm. of variability though you know Instacart workers were striking last week and I'm also seeing pay stubs from Instacart uh, career or you know shoppers that are making two thousand dollars a week which I've, I don't think I've ever seen on Instacart before. Mm-hmm this pandemic so Mm. you really have some you know like always like very different experiences and on food delivery it seems like more incremental right like there's like a little more demand but it isn't you know it isn't cutting it for a lot of uber and lyft drivers that are used to making more i don't know i i I know you haven't done a ton of food delivery but what what have you seen there well what i what i one thing i read was that uh people were offering big tips for their Instacart orders. And then by the time they came <laughs> and de- made the delivery, they lowered the tip down to, to, to yeah. like nothing. That there's a fierce competition to get the, gro- the groceries delivered. Yeah, I think obviously uh, that's a that's pretty really, shitty, really thing shitty thing to do. Thing but to I, do. I, I also yeah. know, I, I have a feeling yeah. that that's a combination of, pro- you know, of course there's always bad people out there, but I think it's probably also a combination of the fact that, you know, right now groceries don't have great 
stock, right? I mean, I think depending on the mm-hmm. city you're in and the grocery store that you so, go to. And so the way that Instacart works is, you know, a, a user will select, let's say, 20 or 30 items. And if half of those items are out of stock, your bill is going to be maybe 50% cut in half. So if you were expecting expecting to tip $50 right. for $100 worth of items, and then you only get $50 and half the stuff wasn't there, you know, you're probably not going to be super happy. And even though it's not the shopper's fault at right. all, um, I think that Instacart, I really, I, <laughs> you know, Instacart I, needs to yeah, do I, a much better really... job of educating the customer. And, you know, for example, like I would like to see Instacart come out with a policy that says, you know, if you want to change the tip after you have to submit a request and, you know, you have to tell Instacart, OK, here's why I want to lower the tip. And if it was because mm. the shopper screwed something up, like you asked for oranges and they gave you apples, OK, you can lower the tip. But if it's because right. they didn't have any of the items you wanted, that's not the courier's fault at all. So I think, again, Right. right. Like some right. of these issues, you know, obviously Instacart is seeing a ton of growth and all, all you know, super high mm. demand. But I, I think that they definitely uh, can probably make some easy communications there and avoid stories like this that, you know, popped up in CNN. And now everyone's pissed yeah. at Instacart. <laughs> I, I know I was an Instacart uh, customer for a year. Every week I had stuff delivered and it was as simple as my avocados were yeah. too hard would make me, you know, yeah. change my tip, you know, so. People get very picky when it comes to their food, and they want it just right. And a lot of times, as you said, it's, it has nothing to do with the shopper. It just has to do with they're their out of they're out of particular yeah. items. So, it, yeah. you know. So, I think that you know we we talked about the I guess some of the options for these workers. You know, these Uber and Lyft drivers, the grocery excuse me, grocery delivery, you know, food delivery, just delivery in general. Um, I guess the only other thing that I would touch on is that it does seem like there are a flood of application, you know, like there might be 20 million unemployed across the country, um, you know, soon. And so, you know, not only are these Uber and Lyft drivers switching over to food delivery, there's a whole bunch of normal people that are switching over to food delivery. I saw that Postmates, you know, they're no longer um, paying for new driver signups and, you know, DoorDash has a waiting list Mm -hmm. in a bunch of cities. So I guess my my advice to there to drivers has been and I think it's been something we've all we've always advised we've always told drivers hey sign up for Uber and Lyft even if you only drive Uber you want to have right. Lyft as a backup and I, I even think I wrote in my book like throw in a delivery service in there too because you never know right you know having that diversification as a driver is you know smart as a business owner and whether you realize it or not you're a business owner as a driver right so you kind of want to diversify yeah. you want to get Get your get your name right. on the so list. Right. So in a situation, right. yeah, because all these like waiters, right. all these other service industries where they just lost their their revenue. Yeah, they're, they're looking. So yeah, so you. It's just a difficult yeah. situation, and I mean, isn't I think it? that obviously, For, the, yeah. you know, and that's why we can start talking about unemployment now because, you know, these are, this is not going to, like, these solutions we have, I think, are going to help a few people, right? If you were, you know, if you've been listening to my podcast or, you know, watching our videos for a while, you better have a plan B, you know, thinking about your plan B already and have B signed up for multiple sure. services. And if you haven't, you know, um, I don't really feel bad for you because you haven't been listening to us. But at the same time, you know, if you're someone <laughs> brand new, um, right, to the content, and to the channel, then, you know, that's sort of where we've been helping a lot. We've been trying to help a lot of people, you know, navigate uh, unemployment because it seems like, you know, this government contribution is going to be pretty huge. And, you know, I don't think we need to get into all the intricacies there. We've got three or four videos and live streams that I've done over on the YouTube channel that go really in depth about yep. unemployment. But I just get, I guess just at a high level, since I know you've been tracking this very closely, what, what, have, what have you seen on unemployment and sort of what's the uh, latest and greatest and what should we expect? Well, you know, I've been saying that I really believe it's mm-hmm. coming, you know, that we're going to get where the drivers, independent contractors to be specific are, are going to get some yeah. unemployment money. Um, but I've had I've gotten some messages from some drivers, you know, who uh, mm-hmm. from the website. They've said they don't think it's going to happen, you know, hmm. that 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 the government. I mean, is so I guess just, legally it's the written gov- into by- the CARES Act. So you know, I mean, I guess technically right, it's right, supposed right, to happen. Right. But, but as you know, right, I always tell but, people, yeah, don't well, don't count your chips till they're in your bank account. But <laughs> right, right, Exa- exactly. Um, but it's got me, you know, I, I'm, what if it yeah. takes three months and then this whole thing is blown over, yeah. you know, and everyone's back to work and they just say, well, you know, we spent gotcha. all the money. There's no money left, you know, but that, that, 
So that's been brought to my attention. I, I, I do firmly still believe that, you know, as long as you've applied and you're not working, doing another job, because um, that's an interesting situation. Yeah. You know, you, uh, you, you, you're no longer driving for Uber, but now you are driving for Instacart. Do you get unemployment benefits? Because you, you're, you're working, you know, you're working and bringing money in. Um, I don't, I don't, there's still yeah. a lot of questions. I know about, we've gotten about, a lot of questions you know, about that and specifically, you know, people who have other, you know, completely, you know, like a normal nine to five job and do Uber and Lyft on the side. And then others, like you mentioned, who are not making any money on Uber and Lyft and then are now working for Instacart. And I guess what I've told people, and I think the advice that I like the best out of, you know, all the crap that I've told people over the past few weeks is, you know, generally unemployment is reduced if you have other income sources. So I would imagine that if you're driving for Uber and Lyft and, you know, all your rides go to zero and you're now, you know, applying for unemployment, but you also start working for Instacart, I suspect that your unemployment is going to be reduced by the amount you're making per week from Instacart. And because that's sort of traditionally how unemployment works. And so, you know, what I've told people is, hey, maybe you want to hedge your bets. And maybe, you know, if you only need a couple hundred bucks a week right now, just work to the amount that you need and then spend that other time like developing a skill, starting a business, something that isn't going to leave sort of a, a financial footprint, right? Like you could go and right, you right, know, let's right. say it was, you know, it's not this easy to start a YouTube channel, but let's say you could go and start a blog and write 100 posts and you knew that once you turned in those 100 posts, it would equal $10,000. That's not how it is in real life. But let's say that was the situation. Mm. I would be working on those 100 posts right now so that when unemployment runs out, I could turn them all in. And you know, so you want to sort of find opportunities right. or situations like that. And that's kind of what I've thought about unemployment yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, but the, and the other part of unemployment is the $600 per week yeah. for four months, you know, which really doesn't seem to have anything to do with how much you've earned in the past, right? That's just supposed to be extra on top of it. So there's still just a lot yeah. of questions. And so you know, and, if we talk and, about Uber and Lyft's role specifically in this unemployment situation, I mean, I think the the thing that I've been a little surprised hasn't been more of a story. And I think what I've been telling people is, you know, right now it's, it's, a, this is like a human issue, right? Like we're trying to figure out how do we get money into the hands of the people, the drivers, the gig workers that need it most. And once that's resolved, mm -hmm. like, I don't really care how the money gets there or what, you know, what the, you know, there weren't, a, you know, like Democrats and mm -hmm. Republicans like work together on this bill, which is very rare. Cause they were just like, we know this is a problem. It's such a big problem. We have to get money into people's hands. Let's, you know, put aside our differences, but I am surprised, you know, so I guess what Uber and Lyft have done in regards to unemployment, you know, Uber CEO Dara Khosrowshahi, before the CARES Act was passed, he wrote a letter to President Trump basically asking for gig workers to be included in the CARES Act so that they would get unemployment. And, you know, I, I don't know how much of a difference that made or not, but the gig workers were included. And I think I've seen a couple mm -hmm. of people ask the question that, you know, okay, so Uber, I think has about eight to $10 billion in cash right now in their bank account. And, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, is, should Uber or should the government be contributing to unemployment or should Uber, um, Uber and Lyft, right? Yeah. And it's not, and, and it's, and it's not, not the, the government. government. Who is who, it? Who does the government, <laughs> who does the government get the money from, from you and me paying our taxes every single year? So, so I guess like my question to you, Jay, is, is this, you know, basically a government or a taxpayer bailout of Uber and Lyft, like with this whole unemployment situation? Well, yeah. yes. I mean, I mean, it, yeah. it clearly is, right? I mean, we, yeah, like you said, it's a human issue. It's, it's also just a U.S. economy issue. You know, people have, you know, trillions of dollars in their in their 401ks. And they're watching that, you know, just shrink down. And if the economy keeps tanking, it's going to get worse and worse. And, you know, and then the chances of recovering quickly are, are gone. And we're into this thing for several yeah. years. So, yeah, you got to get money in our pockets so that we can actually start spending and buying things again so that the economy doesn't just keep going, right. you know, in, in this direction. I guess I'm just not the yeah, biggest fan, though, of rewarding. And it, it's funny, we'll, we'll start talking. I'm sure we'll get into the employee versus independent contractor debate in a second and how that's affected by all this. But, you know, I think my my listeners and my viewers know that I, you know, I, I, AB5 in California, whether drivers should be employees or not, is a complicated issue. But if you ask for my short answer, I was always 
always a no. I don't I don't think drivers should be employees. But what I do think in this situation, like it really has made me, you know, like I don't think the government should be bailing out drivers. I think it's Uber and Lyft's responsibility. And at a minimum, I would have liked to see a shared responsibility, right? If the, you know, and that's kind of how unemployment insurance works. Usually it's employer and employee contribute. And, um, you know, so I I guess I don't like the fact that the government came in. I I like that workers were bailed out, but I don't like that it was the government and really taxpayers that had to do it. I think, you know, maybe a better solution would have been for Uber and Lyft to match whatever the government contributed um and that kind of would have been a nice middle ground since you know maybe asking uber and lyft to do it they probably wouldn't have done anything and that isn't realistic Mm. but i think if the government you know and and that's where it's tough because you have to get something passed quickly to get money into people's hands but at the same time right i really i don't like the idea that uber and lyft were basically bailed out and it sort of rewards them for this business model for their for their yeah. kind of bad behavior. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It's it we're, we're totally bailing them out. And why? You know, why? Because they won't treat with really the respect yeah. they deserve. We're, we're the we're the ones that are out there drive, driving and and doing the work and and uh yeah, well there's just a there's just a lot yeah. of years of bad blood well, really and I think between that, the drivers you know, the, and, and the these main two companies. issues that we're seeing right now for drivers is you know I think number one the unemployment aspect okay Uber and Lyft business is now gone and they're not able to make any money um, you know so unemployment is kind of exactly what would save them in a situation like this and number two is kind of you know the sick pay right those drivers who you know are Mm. still driving, but maybe compromised or, you know, I guess this, this was a little bit more of an issue early on too, in kind of that in between phase, um, where drivers kind of were out there and had to choose between driving and putting food on the table or, you know, not driving at all. And I think a lot of drivers have now made that choice to not drive at all. But I guess, you know, again, right. If, drivers had sick pay, then they could call in sick and wouldn't have to deal with those issues. Because as it is now, if drivers are diagnosed with coronavirus or issued by a doctor, get a doctor's note basically to self-quarantine for whatever Mm -hmm. issue, then they are eligible for sick pay from Uber and Lyft. But I guess to me, again, that's kind of like the bare minimum of what Uber and Lyft should be providing. Right, right. And uh, you probably know more about this than me, but I as far as I know, there aren't a lot of people that are actually getting it. I think it. I saw. There seems to be there seems to be a lot a lot <laughs> of press about everybody gets deactivated yeah. right away, right? But then getting the money is like you know it's like squeezing uh, you know. Yeah. So it's been interesting the sick pay. Yeah. What I out mean, of a rock? You know, I've been I call yeah. it the sick pay saga. So you know, Uber announced this sick pay a few weeks ago, and we actually did a story about a driver who got a test for coronavirus. He, he didn't get the results back yet, but he did get a doctor's note to self-quarantine mm. and he actually got paid by Uber. And we posted that story. That was probably like one of the first stories that... Um, like three, yeah, almost three, four weeks two, ago, yeah, maybe yeah, three that, that weeks was, ago. Yeah. It probably was less, but it feels yeah. like forever. <laughs> and um, and so I was sort of almost giving Uber the benefit of the doubt. But then we started seeing all of these kind of in between stories where drivers got doctor notes, mm-hmm. or they were issued a self quarantine, or they had other they're immunocompromised, and Uber was changing their you know their 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 wording on the page without telling anyone, and it just seemed like they were, you know, not really living up to their side of the deal. And I don't know exactly what happened. If I had to guess, you know, maybe it was like, oh, crap, you know, we have to pay out a lot more <laughs> of these than we realized. Mm-hmm. Than um, we thought. One thing yeah. that I did hear, you know, on to Uber's defense is that, you know, their customer service is now completely uh, in disarray because none of their agents can go into the offices anymore. And so if you've got a bunch of customer support agents in the Philippines, um, mm-hmm. you can imagine their home Wi-Fi and, you know, other places that they can work is not very reliable or secure or, you know there's a lot of issues that they have to navigate there so there's definitely some yeah. challenges there but it seems like in the past couple weeks really it's kind of been a nightmare for a lot of these drivers to actually get paid the sick pay yeah i mean i i post i've had a number so, i mean i posted on my we're talking we're, talk, we're talking about whether they could handle unemployment <laughs> you know and and just getting two weeks of pay to people who are sick, you know, and, and that's, that's yeah. difficult. It's difficult for drivers. It's just, 
they they just never seem they never seem to fail to yeah. disappoint. Yeah, no, I think that that is uh, definitely. I, I I think that Uber and Lyft are going to come out of this, and probably Uber more so than Lyft. To be frank, I think that Uber is you mm. know they're they're kind of the big dog, and so they get you know the good and the bad, right? I mean, Lyft may have a lot of similar policies mm. and issues, but I think I'm seeing a lot more stories about Uber and drivers and you know Uber driver and all of that, and I think that's probably fair mm-hmm. since they have seventy percent market share. But uh, I think the other thing too, you know, I guess as far as Uber, you know, and kind of how they've handled this whole situation. I mean, I guess going forward, I'm curious the if this will really change people's minds about the whole employee versus contractor and specifically drivers. I think that, you know, the two big issues that drivers are having right now are getting unemployment and sick pay. Those two issues would be not mm-hmm. an issue if all drivers were employees. And, you know, in the past, right. when we've surveyed drivers, a majority have said they want to be independent contractors. I think the big caveat is that they want to actually be independent. You know, they want to be able to see where passengers mm-hmm. are going and, you know, set rates and things like that. But I, I'm curious to know if you think this could be kind of a shifting or turning point for, you know, maybe in the future, a lot more drivers, you know, say, hey, wow, that pandemic really screwed me over. Mm. I would much rather be an employee and give up a little flexibility and not ever have to have a situation like that happen to me again. Yeah, well, first of all, I just don't buy the argument that uh, if we become employees, we're going to necessarily lose our flexibility. I mean, it's already happening in New York City, right? In New York City, drivers have a minimum pay, which is one component of being an employee and now if there's a minimum pay right uber right. and lyft can't let you log on whenever and wherever you want they don't want you logging on in you know the middle of nowhere on a tuesday at 3 p.m so you can't log in there anymore right so mm. you know there's definitely a lot that it's impossible to have a loss of flexibility it just i think it's really more if that loss of flexibility is worth it. I would say you shouldn't be driving at Tuesday mm-hmm. at 3 p.m. in the middle of nowhere. That's a stupid driving strategy, right? right? So if anything, right. so, right. 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 so I think it's, it's more, and that's why it's, it's a complex issue. It's more, it's not so much about the loss of flexibility. You can log on whenever and wherever you want and work for 20 or 30 minutes, but do you really need to do that? No, you can give up a little flexibility mm-hmm. if you get a minimum pay. I think that's a good trade-off, right? And so it's just a matter, I think it should be a little, mm-hmm. you know, the conversation should be a little bit more around what you're giving up, right? If you're just taking, 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 that's never going to work out. Right, right, right. Well, to answer your question, no. I don't think this will make nope. any difference. I think I think once it blows over, pe- you know, people are like, okay, we got through that. That's a once in a once in a lifetime mm-hmm. experience, and now now we're back on track. Uh, I don't think anyone's going to think, oh, we're going to have to go through this again next year. So now I want to be mm-hmm. an employee. I, I that's I, I just think human yeah. nature is such that you know we're, we're quick to forget and and we're always, we're looking forward and um, yeah. I yeah. yeah I'm I don't know that I've made up my mind yet because I think it's still kind of evolving. I, I think if you held a gun to my head, I'd probably agree with you. I think people will forget, but I think what's really important. I don't think people are gonna forget about the unemployment. You know how this huge fiasco. I don't think mm. they're gonna forget about the sick pay. So I think that you know going forward, like the legislators, the groups supporting employee status and AB five, mm-hmm. I think they would be much a much smarter strategy would be to say, hey, do you want unemployment insurance? I don't care. Like, don't worry about the the nomenclature. Who cares what what the hell it's called? <laughs> do you want sick pay in right. the future? Right? Do you want unemployment? Right? right. Let's get all those. Like, if they could mm. get all of those things and just not call it employee, I bet you the support among drivers would be so much higher. Right? Because that's that's sort of yeah. the funny thing that I've always thought to myself is right. All of the things that drivers complain to me about and that you know want fixed and you know want to see more of. It's things like higher pay. You know, being able to negotiate with Uber and Lyft. You know, fighting unfair deactivation. These are sort of all the things that unions could fight for on your behalf or that employee status would get you. But when you call it employee or when you call it a union, you immediately turn off a lot of people, maybe because it's a political issue or whatever. But it is there's definitely an opportunity there. And so that's sort of what 
you know, and that's kind of always something that I would, uh, why I would advocate for it. That's why I've never been a supporter of AB5, because I know that so many drivers don't mm. want to be employees. But I, I do know that there are things that all drivers care about. In the past, I think it was higher rates, you know, reducing Uber yeah. and Lyft's commission, fi- you know, not being able to be unfairly deactivated and have no way to challenge it. Those are probably you know, three or four of the top things. And I think probably after this pandemic, you could add having some access to unemployment insurance and some type of sick pay. Now there's going to be like five things that every single driver cares about. Yeah. Yeah. Drivers will want more of a safety net, uh, for, for bad things that can happen. I mean, ultimately it does come down to, you know, if we're employees, can we make more money? You know, that's really the bottom line. Can I sleep better at night? Can I better take care of my family? Those are the issues that people think about. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah. It's it's kind of a it's kind of a coin toss. Will, will people use this experience to change, uh, you know, their feeling about Uber and Lyft and and their and the driver's relationship to the yeah. company? And I think it's a, you're, I think you're right. I think it's we'll, sort of we'll a see. we'll see. It's a little early to you know make a make a decision one way or the other but you know i think i'm going to title this episode grading uber and lyft's response to the coronavirus so if we're going to end on one final question what uh (laughs) but 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 i'm but i'm I'm gonna i'm gonna tell you though if drivers start getting four hundred dollars plus six hundred dollars a week you know in unemployment plus a twelve hundred dollar check plus you know some money from a loan a grant drivers are going to be very very content with with how this yeah. turned out, right? So, we, and if that's the case, then then you know the future the future being irritated with Uber and Lyft will go away because for many drivers making a thousand dollars a week, you know, is is yeah. not bad. Um, so yeah, so there's but still is that a, a lot good thing that has to for... happen. Because it was sort of like, well, we were independent contractors and we got this bailout and it all worked out okay. Or is it sort of going to go the opposite way? And it's like, well, we got all this unemployment, we got all the sick pay, and that's what we would get if we were employees. So let's just do that for the next time. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see. All right. We'll see. So, um, yeah. I guess uh, I'm going to ask ask you now to give. Uh, I guess we'll call it just Uber and Lyft um, a grade on their response to the coronavirus so far. What would you say if you had to give them a grade? Mm. D, D plus. plus. Interesting. D, D plus. Yeah. Yeah. At least they've offered sick pay, which they really didn't have to do. Um, and, and some people are getting it. So it's giving some, some people a little bit of hope. Um, Dara K reaching out and, you know, and asking for government assistance while it's, you know, takes all, all the responsibility off of Uber and Lyft, at least, uh, it brought some attention to to our plight, and 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 perhaps that played some yeah. kind of a role in in um, in the CARES Act. So, you know, it's not an F, but it's certainly not not a very high grade because I like I said, drivers are still driving; they're still risking, literally risking their lives, and 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 potentially spreading this disease yeah. more uh, because they're driving. You know, and and some of those some of those rides are definitely essential, but I, I, I'm sure the majority of them yeah. aren't, uh, you know, it's people that want to go visit their friend and, you yeah. know, whatever, uh, that don't, those rides don't need to happen. Yeah. I think I'm going to be what, what a little grade, nicer. Grade, what... I'm going to give them a C. The ride. Yeah. I, I, think, I think, Oh, nice. I think, wow. you know, cause you, we're not too, I mean, we're not but you gave apart. them a failing grade. You said that, you know, it's sort of like, they got to do this thing over. And I almost like, if it was pass fail, I think I would give them a fail. But since we're grading, mm. well, I just made the arbitrary decision to go A through F. I'm going to give them a C. And I think the reasons why were are because at first, um, when they did do the sick pay, that was a big surprise to me. That, like you said, they didn't have to do that. And I think yeah. looking back, it's like, wow, that, you know, that was kind of like the bare minimum of what they should have done. But when they mm. announced the sick pay, they were the Uber was the first company to do that, then Lyft did it, then all of the other gig companies did it. And I think that's actually really going to hurt their argument in the future that drivers are independent contractors, right? Because the lawyers that are right, suing them right. are going to go and look back at that and use that against them, right? And they're going to use the Mm -hmm. PPE and the, you know, Mm -hmm. the cleaning supplies that they're providing, because those are all things that you're not supposed to really provide to an independent contractor. So 
I think they right. hurt themselves a little bit there, but they kind of understood that either, you know, I guess it was the right thing to do or that they were just going to get killed in the press if they had like sick, you know, the, di drivers diagnosed with coronavirus still driving, driving around. Because, right. you, you, you know, yeah, you know, they. Uh, right. Yeah. You, you know, it was the PR people that that said, hey, if we can spend a little money on sick right. pay here, we can avoid having someone who is sick continuing yeah. to drive. And so, you know, because that, that had to be the, that had to be the yeah, conversation. Yeah. I mean, there's a sick yeah. pay and then, you know, Dara's letter, I think, uh, was definitely a good thing. And, you know, now there's providing supplies and PPE and cleaning supplies. But I think just from the start, I felt like they've been doing not everything right, but a lot of the right things just two to three weeks late. Mm -hmm. And so that's sort of why yep. I'm giving them a C because I think they passed, but it's like, it's still a C. It's not very good. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, pretty bad mm -hmm. still. Right. Um, right. And uh, I think that, I, like, I think that they should, you know, I, I could never imagine them could, like voluntarily, you know, spending mil hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars contributing to unemployment. But I feel like the government should have made them. And so I can't really blame Uber mm. and Lyft for that part. I think that's more of a issue on the, on the government, but that might be a whole topic for another podcast. So, um, they just so off, they so often just seem to get a pass, yeah. you know, I mean, here, here in California, we have AB5, yeah. it's the law, you know, but no one's enforcing it. No one's telling Uber and Lyft they got to treat us like employees. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's it's kind of this too big to fail. Yeah, and I mean, you could kind of thing. imagine, I, and it's really, and that's why it's sort of like, I think, again, at a human level, you want to help out these drivers, whatever, who pays, who cares, you know, just get money into their hands as quickly as possible. But it is, it would have been interesting if, you know, the, the governor of California came down and said, hey, Uber and Lyft, you need to treat drivers like employees ASAP, get them that sick pay, get them out that unemployment. And then it's sort of like your first experience as an employee driving for Uber and Lyft is like, wow, this employee thing is pretty sweet. Um, <laughs> Um, I think that could have been very interesting. But, uh, you know, as always, Jay, I appreciate you coming on the podcast. And we are going to simulcast this one in a couple of different places on the podcast, but also on the YouTube channel. So if you're watching, if you're listening right now, I would love to hear from you in the comments uh, what letter grade you would give Uber and Lyft, um, you know, what, uh, to their response to coronavirus. Let us know what grade you would give them and also why. Um, you don't have to go into all the reasons why, but I'd love to hear from from you guys because you're the ones who are you know directly affected by you know uber and lyft not providing ppe they're you know might be directly putting your life at risk or not paying an unemployment and if you can't now pay your rent that's you know a very big effect on your life so i'd love to hear from you and also we'll see how we can help and keep you educated and informed so without further ado jay um could, could, yeah could, yeah could i could i ask uh for the drivers also who are going to comment what are you doing in response to this situation? How many, I'm curious, like who who actually has a plan yeah. B, and you know what what are you doing? Or did you, did you go deliver groceries, or you know have you built a new website, a new business? What you know what what are you doing in response to this? I think that's real curious. Plus, it would be very uplifting for a yeah. lot of the drivers to see that other drivers are you know taking some bold action out there to. Um, you know, in response yeah, no, to this, a not just great uh, question. And I know we yeah. actually have some upcoming content, you know, we're not going to, you know, I, I think some of these unemployment issues and all that are going to be hopefully resolved relatively soon. And, you know, we're, we're definitely looking for to highlight some stories and, you know, do some more content about, you know, kind of things you can do in this downtime to, um, you know, whether it's plan B, life after mm. rideshare or whatever it is. So definitely stay tuned mm. for that if you're a driver. And uh, as always, you know, um, Jay, if people want to follow your work, learn more from you and uh, your, your skills, where can they find you? nomadj.com all right nomad j a y n o m a d j a y dot right, com cool. yeah and there's there's a there's a form there you can click on contact and send me any any communications awesome. and then yeah. obviously you are a frequent contributor on the rideshare guy youtube channel um so you guys know where I to am. find that you may be uh, listening or watching to that right now and uh, also jay has his podcast uh, the rideshare dojo which you might be listening to so um appreciate all your hard work jay and i know you and i are going to keep working hard to keep drivers uh, educated informed and uplifted so, keep uh, we're going to keep on keeping right. on yep it's all right share all Great. the time take care yep. jay